Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a method I use to combine scan data from a asset I purchased off 3D Scan Store and hand sculpt the geometry that I created in ZBrush. So about a year ago, I uploaded my videos and breakdowns of how I created the uh, classic Loki glorious purpose diorama, but I also breezed through the part where I used ZBrap and combined the scan data and hand sculpted uh, geometry that I created in ZBrush. So what I'm gonna do now is give you a deeper look at the process and the steps that I take to combine those two levels of detail. Okay, so what we have here is a model that I created in ZBrush. Um, let's upload the resolution and we can see I have some details. Um, not a lot of details, but enough to create some definition that I definitely want to retain when I combine uh, the scan data and my model. We've got the landmarks hit, we've got uh, bumps and pores. Here we have the scan data or basically a model that I purchased off of 3D Scan Store. If you guys aren't familiar with it, they have the best models. And as you can see, you have high resolution textures and some great tertiary detail. I mean, look at that stuff. Oof, yeah, worth every penny. Okay, so here we are back in our scene and I have my model and I've appended in the scan data model uh, to line up with my model. I've basically lined up the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the best I can so that they're at the same height and, and eye level. Now I've also lowered both models to their lowest subdivision level and I'm gonna turn on ZRAP. For those of you who are familiar with ZRAP, ZRAP is an awesome application which takes pre-existing geometry and automatically wraps around your geometry. Now I've turned on symmetry to make my life easier here and I'm gonna start plotting points. Now the scan model's on the left, my model's on the right, and where I'm plotting points is going to tell ZRAP how to wrap the version on the, or the, the, the model on the left on the right. So make sure when you're plotting points, you're plotting them to the exact corresponding spots that you want them to. Um, I tend to add more points than, than, than most. I, I see people be a little sparse and not add too many points, but I feel like I get the best results when I'm more and more precise results when I add more points, especially around areas like the eyelids, uh, the mouth, uh, the nose, you really want to be sure that those areas line up right because there's nothing worse than having a model once you finish the wrap and the eyelid is mapped incorrectly or is slightly off. So uh, if I plot enough points, it kind of alleviates the uh, errors like that. Now, don't get me wrong, there sometimes are uh, errors or there's, there's issues with um, how things line up and you might have to redo the process. Luckily, this is a pretty easy process to replicate and you can go back and redo it. I also sometimes save my points, uh, which you can do for both sides, just to make it easy for you can reload them again. If you have any errors, you can reload the points. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, not show you the entire process of plotting points for the entire body, considering we're only looking at the face and working with the tertiary details that we wanna get onto our model. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit wrap here and you'll see the results. Here we are. Here is the scan data model, now wrapped to have the shape of my model. And as you can see, I have the shape, but I also have all the tertiary details uh, that I was really wanting from the 3D scan store model. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my model here, I'm going to delete the morph target that I have, store a new one while having the highest subdivision level turned on with the details that I sculpted and want to retain. And I'm going to get the smooth brush now, create a new layer and start smoothing out all those details that I sculpted. Now I'm doing this at the highest subdivision level so that I'm only losing the uh, the details that I sculpted. Now I still have the primary landmarks, I still have the shape of the lips, I still have some deep prominent uh, wrinkles around the nose, uh, I have them around the eyes. Those are thicker landmarks that I definitely want to keep, 
But as far as all the 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 details, the bumps, the the, the pores that I had at kind of a mid-level, the lines on the lips, I'm getting rid of all of that. All in this one layer. I'm going to smooth everything out. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to get my morph brush. We're going to call this our sculpted details. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to start painting back in all of the details that I smoothed out. So I hope this is starting to make sense. We now have two layers, one layer with a smooth face and one with our hand painted sculpted details. This is going to give us the ability now to control how much of that detail we want to bleed through. We can go through deformation and add some contrast to it. Um, we can smooth it out a little bit more um, or we can uh, we can leave it as it is. What we're going to do next is I'm going to create another layer after turning off the sculpted detail layer and I'm going to turn on now our Z wrapped model so here we are with the z-wrap model you see all the details they're all there and we're now going to do a projection a projection on the empty layer we just created on our other model but just for a second here let's let's just admire these details real quick mm -mm -mm. that's good stuff Okay, so we're going to turn on both our models and I'm just just to be sure I'm going to turn off um, both of the original layers I created the smooth layer and, and the sculpted layer. I'm going to turn on the record uh, for the new layer, which is going to be the scan data uh, geometry that we're going to project. I have both models turned on and we're going to hit project. So after hitting project, we can already see that there are some errors and this is uh, something to expect. We're going to go through now and I'm going to turn off some of my poly groups and go through and clean up some of these, you know, these uh, spiked geometry that sometimes happens whenever you do a projection. I, I find that it happens pretty frequently around that the ocular cavity, nose, the ears and mouth. Um, but the best thing to do is to just from one subdivision uh, from the bottom, start working your way up and start to clean up and smooth these areas. Uh, it's really rare you get a projection that doesn't have a little weird artifacting going on, but this is just part of the process. Um, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it, but let's just go ahead and fast forward as I get through the cleanup so that we can see the final results in combination of the uh, details and scan data. Okay, so here we are. Now we have our scan data on one layer and we can adjust that layer as we want to, to either be a little bit stronger, to be a little bit less prominent, and we can make our actual sculpted details, which we have on the second layer and have that kind of poke through a little bit more, bleed through and kind of create a happy medium of both levels of detail. And that's how you combine your tertiary detail form from a scan data model and sculpted data. Hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll get back to you promptly. And I promise sooner than it took me to make this video. And for those of you who have continued to support me and subscribe, I really appreciate that. And uh, I'll be dropping new content uh, periodically. Uh, take care and stay creative.